G'day guys, it's Grant here. My daughter Soph's gonna come out in a minute. Uh, a lot of people ask, ask, what is the biggest threat to chicken keeping? Is it the fox? Is it the raccoons for the people from the States? Is it the hawks that fly over all day? And my answer is simple. It's chicken keeping, keepers themselves. The biggest threat to backyard chicken keeper is badly trained uh, and lazy chicken keepers. Uh, we're just back from a bit of a bit of a rough day. It's Saturday afternoon. Uh, whereabouts have we been hanging out all day, Soph? Um, we've been at a friend's house um, uh, cleaning their uh, well, so we've got one of our, one of our uh, friend's granddads uh, lives in Dandenong and he called us out saying he's got a bit of a chicken emergency, uh, that he has been inundated with rats and mice. So we jumped in the car, obviously gloved up. When we got there, it was pretty messy. It was pretty nasty. We were we were moving um, drink drinkers, we were moving a hay straw and there were just rats everywhere. And I thought to myself, hey, how can it get so bad? And B, what is he doing wrong? The answer, a lot. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about how to eradicate rats and mice and vermin from your chicken coop entirely. We're gonna talk about how the biggest culprit in uh, rats and mice in the backyard is bad chicken management. By the end of today, you're gonna to be upskilled with all the skills needed to guarantee there's none, not even one, mouse in your backyard. In fact, if you follow these steps correctly, a good chicken keeper will have less mice in their backyard than people that don't own chickens. Stick with us, let's get into it. This was just a bit of the footage of the coop we were helping to clean out today. As you can see, we found this large rat uh, amongst many, many others. So we know there's a problem and we need a response, a structured response. So before we get into it, let's go through the structure of this video. So we'll just go over the learning intentions and structure of this video. We're gonna be breaking up into six small segments uh, because we've got quite a lot of feedback that they liked our channel because we fill you with information and also give you a bit of a structure. So I thought we'd run with it. First of all, we're gonna have a brief mention, bit, bit of a Socratic discussion about problems associated with mice and rats. The same, then we're gonna jump into common mistakes made by chicken keepers. Another common mistake you can see is a lack of full stop at the end of the word keepers. Move on guys. Third thing is know your enemy. You need to be able to identify rats and mice in your backyard so you know what's causing the problem and you can adjust your response accordingly. Then we're gonna jump into section four, don't waste your time. Myths and misconceptions about minimizing rodents in your chicken coop and backyard. Then we're gonna get to the good stuff. Section five, the solution to getting rid of rodents forever. And this method is so bulletproof, I can guarantee you will never see a mouse or a rat ever, yes, ever in your backyard. And lastly, know your chickens. Know your requirements and regulate your coop to ensure there's no rats, A, but more importantly, B, your chickens are happy and healthy. All right, let's jump into the first section. All right, let's have a little bit of a discussion about problems associated with rats and mice. Now, if you've got chicken, uh, rats and mice in your, your coop, you might not know, even know it. Um, there's a couple of signs and symptoms that you can diagnose rats as a problem. Number one, if you have a sudden drop in air production and you can't really work out why, often the stress of rats and mice can push your chicken off the lay. Another thing is if you come in, in the morning and you, both your ducks and your chickens have uh, cuts, especially around their face and feet, that look more aggressive than molting, it's actually good, probably a sign that rats and mice are in your coop. It's actually not uncurred or soft for rats and mice to chew off chicken's feet, wattles, combs, uh, and, and everything uh, cool about the chicken. Um, Sorry, may I say, um, if you have a scoby duck, that's normal. Having a red face is like they have... Oh, good point, yeah. soft, good, the crunkles, yeah, that yeah. is 100% true. But if you have a, your chicken that wakes up with weeping sores on its face, or it seems to have mites right after you've cleaned the coop and you just can't work it out, it could be rats and mice or if your chicken goes off production, or if it's night time and they're really reluctant to go to the coop at night, it could be a sign that um, rats and mice have infested your coop. Now, the reason you gotta get on top of them really quickly is to keep the goodwill of your neighbors and the community. People always blame chicken coops for rats and mice. If you have this style feeder hanging or something, I guarantee you've got rats and mice and you don't know about it regardless of how you've built your coop or how bulletproof it is. My tip for you is, my take home message, 
go to the garage, get your hammer and smash this within seconds of finishing this video. Because rat, mat, rats and mice are guaranteed if you have that. We're going to get more into that in a minute. Now, rats and mice carry diseases. So, have you heard of the bubonic plague? Um, no, I haven't. Well, have you heard of COVID or coronavirus? Yes, I have. Well, coronavirus, we're in Australia, the most locked down state in Australia. We're going nuts in Victoria. At the moment, it's killed about 5.7 million. Well, did you know the bubonic plague, which was caused originally from fleas jumping off rats, killed between 75 and 200 million people from North Africa to Europe, to China. And this is all caused off rats and mice. And before you say that, that plague's not around, it still is around. Believe it or not, Madagascar had like 400 deaths in 2015. So the, the disease is still there, but a lot more nasty stuff can come. So we've got to get rid of the mice because the minute we have a plague in our city, the first people they're going to blame is chicken keepers. And I guarantee the first thing uh, the old Mr. Daniel Andrews government will do if there's a new disease is force us chicken keepers to cull our stock. And that's also another separate thing is never register your chickens with the council ever. But that's another discussion for another podcast. On your screen, you're going to see two of the worst mistakes chicken keepers do. And this is pretty controversial. The first thing I want you to ask yourself, do you know any people that keep chickens but don't have fruit trees or a veggie patch? Do you know Do you know anyone, Soph? Um, I know... Body. Exactly. The thing is, a lot of rats and mice come from fruit trees, uh, from veggie patches, and having chickens is another thing. But the worst thing that you can have is a static compost bin. That's the kind of compost bin, like this one pictured, that sits on the ground because... A lot of people compost their their bread, their fruit, their veggies, and the thing is a rat will just dig under that within 13 seconds and make a nest in it. Now a lot of people say, oh yeah, you can put uh, mesh or galvanized mesh even better under it, but I guarantee if you have that sitting on the ground with the morning dew, the water and all the juices coming down, it's guaranteed to rust out within a month flat. So the first thing that is a big no-no is static compost bins. Now don't get me wrong, we love compost bins. Uh, I've got three compost bins that are compost tumblers, which are the best compost type you can have, and I'll show you about that in a second. And we do have a deep litter bed in our chicken coop, but we never ever have feed near our chicken coop. But one more thing is um, rats can, uh, uh, like, their teeth never stop growing, so they just want to bite something, so they can bite through that really easily. Yeah, that's a good point. If anything is on the ground, they will uh, gnaw and munch on it until there's a hole. The next thing is the grandpa feeder, made in 1995 by New Zealand. Now, if you think that was the best thing to come out of from 1995 for us chicken community, there's a lot better things happening in Pakistan. Sorry, New Zealand, love your work though. Uh, but we're gonna get to how the people from from Pakistan changed chicken, chicken keeping forever in 1995. Remember that, but forget the grandpa feeder. This is a feeder that uses a chicken's weight to open a latch, uh, allowing access to feed. We've tried this, mates have tried this. This is a one-stop guarantee to rats. Yeah, you won't have them in the first month, but after about six months, they gum up, they gunge up, they rust, they jam, and it just becomes another problem. So if you've got two of these, put them for sale, get rid of both of them, because these are rat magnets so excuse the worst quality camera but i just thought it might be really cool to show you what compost tumbler is now we've got three of these compost tumblers in our backyard uh, and they're one of the best things you can get on the market i always get them from facebook marketplace or gumtree you can get them from bunnings for about 200 bucks but i always get secondhand ones for no more than 30 bucks because some uh, rich yuppie living in ashburton or something will buy it um, then they get upset with the color and the look of it and then want to get rid of it quick. Sometimes you've got to hose them down, but for 30 bucks you can't go wrong. Another really good thing about these compost tumblers is they're completely sealed. Um, you can get a lot more aerobic uh, breakdown through obviously getting more oxygen through it. Um, and they're guaranteed not to have rats and you can actually compost meat and vegetables because it's such a sealed unit off the ground, you know you won't get vermin. Yes, we have a deep litter compost bin in our coop, but we only put hay and chicken poop in that. Um, so we're just hanging out with a nice little chicken and a duck. We thought we'd use this camera because it, we can go straight into the next document called Know Your Enemy. Now here you've got the two main rat types faced in Australia compared to the common house mat. 
mouse. Now, it's really, the most common one is called Rattus Rattus. That's a scientific name. Um, and the second one is actually larger, referred to as a Norway rat. Now, don't stress about the Norway rat. They're a pretty harmless rat. They usually live in people's roofs uh, and go undisturbed. Whereas the Rattus Rattus is the one that really caused the problem. Now, this is a rat, as you can see in this picture, that we pulled up at the chicken coop of uh, my mate's grandfather, who we were helping. Um, and it's important to be able to identify what type do you think this is a rat or a mouse? It's a rat, and I think it might be the Rattus Rattus or the Roof Rat. Exactly, what and what again. features about this rat help you identify um, this species? The ears are larger. And, and more round, yeah. yep, good spotting. And it doesn't have as much of a blunt nose. Now, the, the Rattus Rattus will have a blunt nose, whereas the Norway rat, Rattus Norvigius, has more of a, like, almost at the front of a boat. Um, so it's a little bit different. And obviously, you've got the young rat compared to the mouse. The secret with young rats and mice, just look for the big head, to be honest. Also, if you can identify with the eyes for the um, yeah. rat. And if you see in this identification picture that we took uh, today, it's got a larger eye, almost an oversized eye. Mm. We're up to the section we've all been waiting for, the solution. The solution to get, no, guarantee a rat and mouse free chicken coop. Uh, and you'll notice something in Soph's hand. It is probably the most important uh, piece of equipment for chicken keepers on the planet. So, what is it? So it is a uh, tray that goes under the uh, pot plants and you can just get them for $2 at banks. So once you've got this really rare apparatus known as a pot plant tray, you need to get yourself... So once you've got this really rare apparatus known as a pot plant tray, you need to get yourself... Now, we'll talk about the bin that we keep it in under the eaves of our house uh, to keep the rats out, but I wanted to have a little bit of a chat about protein analysis. If you're using this free range method that we are gonna show, you have to get the highest protein possible because the idea behind this feeding regime is never leave, leave feed out. Now, we're gonna do another podcast on micronutrients to assist with chicken health, but go for a protein of at least 22%, which is very important. Now, earlier in the video, I talked about this amazing thing that happened for chicken keepers around the world in 1995. No, it wasn't the grandfather feeder being invented. It was this amazing uh, Pakistani man whose last name is Askard. He did this amazing um, research regarding chicken, chicken feed and amount used. He had 109 flocks, right? Uh, all layer birds, uh, and they were given 18.4 percent protein food. He found some really amazing things. He found that chickens who were overcrowded ate more than those who are correctly spaced, which are sort of he put down to maybe some form of stress eating. So when a chicken is relaxed, it will eat less. He also worked out that a, a optimal amount of grams of food given to a chicken um, was between 102 to 115 grams. You might be saying, hey, stop the bus, Grant. Um, you're giving your chickens 70 grams a day. The reason I give mine 70 grams is two reasons. Number one, I have heritage birds, which lay on average 
an egg every second day compared to Isa Browns um, or industrial chickens, which lay an egg a day for the first two years and then drop away. The second thing is in my backyard, I have a huge free range system, about 500 square meters with about 140 fruit trees. So at all times, there's something either in bloom or to be eaten um, ready for the chickens because everybody knows 25% of chickens diet is grass and greenery. Another thing he found in this study, which further backs up our ratio and mathematics behind it, is he found that 2.5 um, kilograms of feed produces roughly one kilo's worth of eggs. So that's 2.5 to 1 ratio. Now, what we're feeding 70 grams of feed a day, right? Heritage layers um, lay eggs sometimes slightly smaller, but every second day. So that means every second day, we are feeding our chickens 140 grams, which is almost that one to 2.5 ratio. But when you add in that 25% grass that it eats and it's incidental feed like bugs, we are well above that ratio. Our food is now separated into two trays, one for our morning feed, one for our afternoon feed. So what you're about to see is how we feed our chickens every morning and afternoon. It's about 7, 7.20 uh, on a nice school day. This is Soph's job every morning. As you can see, the first thing she does is set out three trays in a triangular pattern, all about 2.2 meters apart. You'll notice that two have logs to stop being tipped over and one has nothing. She has a food all put out, so that's half the day's ration on the little tray, and you'll notice a kettle there. Occasionally warm up a little bit of water, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and this sort of helps with the Muscovy ducks. So so let's just open the electric fence, um, wearing a really fashionable hoodie, as you can see. Um, and she gives the chooks a bit of time to uh, get into position. Uh, as you can see, we have a uh, rooster out. Um, we don't put him away when we feed because he just keeps an eye on the chooks. And it sort of helps with the wild bird situation. Now, the first thing you know, she's doing a bit of a shake. As I mentioned, that's half the day's rations ready for this morning's feed. And once you get a good brood of chooks, uh, we have 15 chickens. So we aim for five chickens around each tray to ensure that everyone gets a good feed and minimal fighting. Um, as you can see, Rudy's getting a little bit pumped up. But once the ducks come out, he stops his antics. The first thing you'll notice is so um, fills up the tray without the logs with water. We sometimes slightly warm in winter as, it, as it's the middle of summer, hence why it's so dry here. Um, you put about two inches of water. This is so when you feed uh, the Muscovy ducks, they gather around this tray rather than mill around at other trays because the Muscovy ducks love being fed if their food is submerged in water. Strangely though, it sort of caught on all the other chooks give it a go. And as you can see, Soph is equally sharing the morning ration between the three uh, tubs, all 2.2 meters apart. What I love about the chickens is they have a real case of FOMO, as in fear of missing out. So they keep having a nibble in one tray and just checking the other tray. Although deep down, they know it's the exact same food. They just want to be sure to be sure. So as you can see, the birds are all settling in. The ducks have a bit of a waddle around and it's Soph's job to keep an eye on them for about five or eight minutes just to make sure they're settled down and also notice if there's any having trouble walking, looking underweight, underfed. If Soph's got any broody chickens, it's her job to then uh, get those broody chickens and get them out for a quick, uh, quick, quick meal because there's this thing called hefting that Soph always does where every day she has to uh, lift about half of the chickens. And when you lift a chicken up, you check the bumble foot, you check the weight because you get a good mental understanding of how heavy they should weigh. And weight loss in chickens is always the first sign of stress or any problem. So you do this thing called hefting where Soph will lift each one, uh, maybe half half the chooks in one day, half the chooks the other day. If you have a look at this uh, Silky, uh, he's getting uh, bullied. So what does a bully do? The bully becomes a bully. It's, uh, it's like uh, working in a primary school all over again. Uh, so the chickens are settling in, uh, getting their meal. If you actually look at this little flock here, this is the non-dominant flock, and that means they get a get a go without being nudged out by the larger ones. Because as you can see, the silky goes over there and won't have a bar of it.
Now it's been about 15 minutes and soaked out, as you can see, she's changed her school uniform ready for the day, um, and 15, 18 minutes. And the beauty of this is you then get the trays and start stacking them up. The idea between uh, you pour all the tr food into the bottom tray and stack accordingly. This guarantees that no vermin, mice, rats, rodents can get in, and it also ensures that there is no wild birds eating your food, which is a one-stop uh, shop to trouble. Chuck a couple of logs in, that's more for ornamental reasons. Um, the, you get really tight-fitting tubs. Feel sorry for um, our Brahma Lily. She's a little bit sad. She's had a great feed, she's a big girl. And as you can see, she's just checking. Uh, unfortunately, uh, lovely chicken, the kitchen is closed until four o'clock. Uh, so uh, stay tuned, little chicken. It's now your job to feed yourself. And what's funny is they walk around, they check, um, and then I guarantee within about four seconds, she'll be like, all right, time for me to go to work, swaddle down and uh, start finding some bugs, grubs and greenery. I might just have to remind her the kitchen is closed. All right, there we go. She's got the idea. She's heading off. Stay tuned for our final thoughts and considerations. Regarding rodent-free chicken keeping. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's video on how to keep mice, rats and vermin out of your chicken coop forever. So basically the premise of our idea is never have food out for more than two 20 minute increments a day. Now there are a couple of exemptions to this rule uh, that you, you should sort of keep in mind. What are they, Soph? Uh, they are when a chicken is younger than 22 weeks. Um, yeah. yeah, well said, Soph. When a chicken's that age, its muscles and its bones are still developing at quite an alarming rate, uh, getting ready for egg production or breeding. And in those situations, they need constant access to food. Uh, what's another exemption, Soph? Uh, when your chicken is sick, so you would have it in a smaller cage. Definitely quarantine and, it. Yeah. The minute you think a chicken's looking a little bit unwell, this fella's looking pretty good. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, the first thing you do is quarantine it and always have food water access constantly because you need constant weight gain in those situations. Now, there's a couple of things that people say, oh, don't worry, I have a lot of uh, things I've done um, to keep the, the rats out, which are complete myths. What are some of these myths, So, So, uh, one of the myths is um, using mint. The chickens just eat mint. Yeah, chickens eat mint, and rats don't even get deterred by it. Um, so, another thing is people often say, oh, use pine shavings, pine shavings. If you look behind the plaster board of every house in Australia, the frame's made of uh, pine anyway. And as, as anyone that's had a rat infestation knows, when you pull back that plaster board, there's pine bits that have been chewed on everywhere. Yeah, pine does not deter rats so so um what about uh heritage breeds and non-heritage breeds would you recommend this this method of chicken keeping for people that primarily have eyes of browns i mean they're bred in factories for meat eggs i don't think they will have a very good idea of hunting for food and Scavenging for food. Yeah, well said, Soph. In Australia, we use the Cornish Cross for meat, Soph, but yeah. the eyes are browns oh. for egg. No, close enough. And yeah, they've been bred specifically to be cage uh, reared. Uh, I, I believe probably eyes are browns would be magnificent in this situation, but we don't feel really qualified to give you any advice in that breed. We are only spirit specialised in heritage breeds, uh, with the exception of Australop, which is a 1970s Australian breed, which is a ma magnificent forager. Now, we don't want to put our grumpy pants on or our angry hat, but what about, we've, we've told chicken keepers this before, and they've said, oh, we don't have time to uh, to spend doing that kind of stuff. So what do you have to say to people that say they don't have time to use this method? Um, I say you shouldn't have chickens in the first place. I mean, if you can't just be there for eight minutes watching your chickens eat. Twice a day, yeah. yeah. twice a day, it's, you don't have to. Yeah, 100%. And I'm going to extrapolate on that and say anyone that has uh, mice and rat infestation in your coop, uh, you're letting down your livestock first of all, you're letting down the community and your neighbours around you because that's disgusting and poor form, bringing diseases and germs to your community. And most of all, you're letting down the chicken community as a whole because uh, it's people like uh, those kind of people that just don't seem to care or have those feeders where there's food everywhere that uh, are just making problems for everyone. And lastly, Sof, what about a lot of people will say, oh, but my coop has fine mesh, 0.39 of an inch, 10 millimeters tiny, tiny thing. 
they, uh, yeah, they can still fit through that. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course the adults can't fit through, but yeah. when you get the pups, the baby mice, and we've, we've had this heaps of times when we go clean out these beautiful coops that look amazing, but they've got mice infestation. The babies slip through the gaps, and then within two years, a mouse is laying um, between eight and 10 litres a year. Some have even been reported up to 14 litres a year of uh, up to 14 pups. So a baby mice, two of them can easily bring up to 50 mice within a year into your coop. So do yourself a favour, get rid of the mice, get rid of the rats and get some healthy chickens today. Thanks guys. Thanks for listening. Soft, do you want to say anything? I think we've covered everything. And don't forget to like and subscribe so we can make some more videos.